Okay, returning to data on, on envelopment analysis, I keep calling it data envelope analysis um, or DEA. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about linear programming formulation. So how do we write a linear program that will solve uh, the DEA problem for us? Um, there are a couple of different options or ways you can do DEA. Um, for this video, we're going to focus on input-oriented, meaning that we're trying to minimize essentially the, the inputs used um, while ma matching the outputs used. And um, we'll talk a little bit about returns to scale in a future video, but um, for now we're just doing constant returns to scale, which is uh, sort of the, the first step or, or, or easiest one to kind of uh, think about. So in the intro video, I introduced this idea of efficiency uh, and let's give a sort of uh, parameter to, or variable in this case actually, um, to represent efficiency. And so we'll use theta as our efficiency score. And we sort of said previously, uh, kind of a little bit hand wavy, that uh, the efficiency score was the input of some target that we make divided by the input of whatever DMU we're interested in. Okay. And and that's going to be the, the, the essential idea. We're just going to um, kind of have to modify this a little bit um, because if we had ratio of things, uh, it would not be linear programming anymore. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to modify this to say, uh, essentially multiply this input of the DMU over the other side. Um, so we can rewrite this as the input of our target uh, is going to be theta times the input of our DMU. Okay. Um, and then here, uh, we might put equals, but because we're going to have multiple inputs, um, we're going to, we're going to put a less than or equal to. So we're going to make a target that uses less, uh, inputs than our efficiency times our DMU. Okay, so um, less inputs is better, right? And so our target is better than our efficiency times our current DMU. So um, another way you can think about it is this efficiency sort of um, shrinks down. Uh, yeah, it, think about it this way. Um, we'll use a less than or equal to here, okay? To kind of um, create a target that is as small as possible relative to our DMU while still matching the output, okay? Um, so when we were constructing our targets in the last video, the other thing that we needed is that we needed that the output of our target, that should be greater than or equal to the output of our DMU. Okay, so our target is going to use less input and produce more output uh, than our current, than whatever DMU that we're looking at. We've thrown this efficiency measure in between uh, here to essentially say how much can we shrink uh, the input's target relative to the DMU's target. Okay, and so uh, the, the, ba the big idea, and if you get this, you sort of understand uh, the symbols that will kind of flow in a little bit, is that we want to create a target that uses less inputs and produces more outputs, okay? And, and, we, and for the inputs, we want to shrink them even further to get a measure of the efficiency. If we can't, uh, if we can't make, uh, if we can't produce more output and have any smaller input, then we'll end up with an efficiency of one. And so that's the idea of an efficient DMU is one that you can't, you, there's no way to produce more output with less input, okay? So um, this sort of in words, halfway to symbols, let's sort of add uh, some more symbols in here to make this a little bit more formal, okay? Um, so let's introduce some parameters and the parameters are our data where data envelope analysis uh, gets its name from. And uh, we're gonna have two parameters for each DMU. 
Um, we're going to have the amount of X's. X's are our inputs. And so I'll write, write this as X I D. So two indexes on that X um, is going to be the amount of input I used by DMUD. OK. Um, DEA is flexible to allow us to have multiple inputs. Actually, in the case of one input, DEA is kind of overkill. Um, but it so it allows multiple inputs. So we could have um, sort of several different metrics um, that are acting as our inputs. So it could be full time equivalent staff, as well as budget, as well as um, technology spending uh, and, and so forth. And so um, we can have many, many inputs feeding into our DMUs. We can also have many outputs coming out of our DMUs. And so uh, X's are the inputs, Y's are the outputs. And so I'll do X or, or YRD, which is the amount of output R used by DMUD. Okay, and so potentially multiple outputs. We're going to index the outputs by R. We're going to input the outputs by index the inputs by I. Um, they're both also indexed by which DMU they belong to. Okay, and so maybe the one thing to get your kind of mind around early on is that the X's and the Y's are not variables, they're parameters. So um, in order to do DEA, you need to know what are the inputs and outputs for each of your decision-making variables, uh, decision-making units. And those provide the data or the parameters for the optimization problem, okay? So those are the parameters. What are the variables? What are the decision variables of the LP? Um, one of the decision variables is gonna be theta, okay, the efficiency. of the current DMU. Um, one thing I'll, I'll mention now is that um, to do DEA, it's actually not one linear program, but one linear program for each of the decision-making units, okay? And so I'll avoid adding extra indexes by just saying this theta is the efficiency of the current DMU, but then we're gonna repeat this for each of the DMUs, okay? Um, and then we're going to have uh, these lambdas, and those are indexed by D. And so these are going to be, um, we can think about these as, as weights or coefficients. Um, yeah, I'll call these weights of uh, DMU D in the target. Okay, I introduced these in the solution of the last intro video, um, but these tell us it, how our target is going to be made up as a linear combination of our other DMUs. And uh, linear combination needs weights, and these weights essentially tell you, uh, in forming your target, how much of each DMU factors into that target, that efficient target. And it's only going to be a combination of the DMUs that have 100% efficiency. Okay, so um, lambda is going to be zero for any inefficient DMU. Okay, but it's going to be a combination of all the efficient DMUs uh, that form the target for the current DMU. Okay, so it's the weight of DM. UD in the target uh, for the current DMU, okay? Uh, each DMU is going to have a different target, a different set of lambdas, and different theta. And so um, all these de uh, decision variables you can think of as having maybe another index that tie them to what is the current DMU, but I'm going to kind of um, not write that extra index to kind of keep us from getting confused. Okay, so there's our parameters, there's our decision variable. 
what is now our linear program. So we'll start off with what's the objective. And our objective is to essentially reduce the input in our target by as much as possible. And what reduces the input is this theta. Um, so the smaller we make this theta, the less inputs our target is using while still producing as much output, okay? And so our objective is to minimize that theta. So we're gonna small, find the smallest theta um, that would still have a target that would produce as much output. Um, and that's uh, maybe the difference between input-oriented and output-oriented. Um, so this input-oriented, we're trying to minimize the amount of inputs used. The output-oriented, we won't write up, but it's pretty similar. But you're trying to maximize the amount of outputs you produce while still um, using less inputs. So kind of just flips, flips the paradigm a little bit uh, when you do output-oriented. So uh, we want to minimize theta, and then we subject to some constraints. Uh, we're going to have uh, two sort of families of constraints um, in there. One is we're going to have an input constraint, um, which in words is uh, what I wrote up here, that the input of the target is less than or equal to theta times the input of the DMU. So let's think about what is the input of the target. Well, the input of the target is going to be, we're going to use these lambdas to essentially create a linear combination of the other DMUs as our target. So um, that input of the target, we're going to sum over all the DMUs. So D equals one to, I'll call this ND for number of DMUs. Okay, oops, running off the bottom of the screen there. So I'm gonna sum over all of them. I'm gonna take lambda D times X I D. Okay, uh, so this is a variable, that's a parameter. I can multiply the two and it's not, and it's still gonna be linear programming. Um, and that is essentially the target amount of input of input I used by decision D. And then we kind of take a combination of all the other DMUs uh, chosen by their weights by lambda D. And the lambda D is going to choose the ones um, or choose from the most efficient ones. We don't actually have to tell it to do that. Okay. And we want that to be less than or equal to theta times the amount of input used by our current DMU, okay? And so that's gonna be X, I. For our current DMU, I'm gonna use K to represent the current DMU. And so K equals index of the current DMU, okay? Uh, so I've summed over the D index. You'll notice there's still an I here and an I here. Um, I is telling me which input it is if, if there's multiple inputs. Uh, and so I'm going to say that this is for each input I. Okay, and so if there's three different inputs, I'm going to have the same formula using the same weights here um, and the same theta here. Um, for each of those inputs, okay? Uh, and then, so this is the input restriction. Now we want the output restriction. And that's going to look very similar. We're going to sum over all the decision-making units. Instead of uh, combining their inputs, we're going to combine uh, their outputs. And that has to be, whoops, I almost made the sign the long, wrong way, greater than or equal to the amount of output uh, from our current DMU. So our current DMU is DMU K, um, and that's gonna be for each 
output are. And so you can have um, four or five different output metrics that you're measuring your DMUs on, uh, and you're going to get one cons one output constraint for each of those um, outputs. Okay, and so overall, the number of constraints is going to be uh, the number of inputs that you have plus the number of outputs that you have. Okay, uh, the number of variables that you'll have is the number of DMUs that you have plus one, okay, for each DMU, okay, because we do this um, optimization problem once for each DMU, okay, and so that is the uh, primal formulation of uh, the DEA linear program for a single DMU, and then you just repeat that same um, linear program for each of the other DMUs. Um, what switches up is really just uh, these values that are over here on the right-hand side of how I currently wrote it out. But uh, when you switch those up, uh, you're going to get different lambdas and a different theta. Okay, and so you're going to get a different combination as your target for each of them. Okay, so that uh, kind of wraps up this video going through the nuts and bolts of the linear programming formulation for the DMU.